Well, good evening, Citizens Advisory Committee members for the Hawkinson School District. Here we are in 2022. As I shared with one member earlier, it was a wild day. Um, a lot of it was unanticipated. Some of it was anticipated or, or maybe feared, you know, but um, we had some buses behind schedule because of some adverse um, road conditions. And then there was a pretty, sounds like a pretty significant car accident. And it closed down uh, 152nd. So that stopped our buses. So that's how our day got started. And then that's on the heels of learning about some um, increased case rates of COVID. And I'll elaborate on that following our presentation. But uh, first, we have Kathy Pacheco, who is our associate principal and athletic director at Hawkinson High School. She's here to um, familiarize all of you with the scope of athletics and activities at Hawkinson High School, and then also give you a, a better sense of the financial side of, of running um, those two programs. Basically, they all fall under ASB. So, um, Kathy, I'm going to turn it over to you and then just okay. prompt me along the way and I'll advance the slides. Okay. Um, well, I guess you already took my second slide, um, just introducing myself. So, um, this is my first year at Hawkinson, and I'm really happy to be here and excited to share some information um, with you all about the athletic programs and our clubs that we have at Hawkinson. So um, next slide, I'm just gonna, just an overview of tonight. I'll talk about the, the different sports programs, our clubs, the numbers, and I guess what we call the Hawkinson way. Um, going to the next slide, um, we have quite a few fall sports. Um, that's our biggest um, season with seven sports. Winter sports right now, we've got four teams plus cheer and then the spring sports. Um, I pulled numbers from this fall, current, and then last spring. So um, I think it's pretty awesome that we have um, out of 640 students enrolled in school that currently we have, um, for winter sports, we had 17% of our student body participating. Um, fall was 28%. Um, student participation. And in the spring from last year, it was 21%. Um, so I think that's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm, it was kind of my goal that we have as many students involved in as many um, ways as they can, just because it, we all know that the data shows that when kids are involved, um, you know, they do better in school and just makes, you know, school fun. And that's why you want to come. Um, Let's see, going to the next slide. Um, we had a lot of success this fall. I don't know if any of you have students that played sports, but um, our volleyball team, proud to say <laughs> we had three full teams um, and they were able to finish their regular season without losing any games. Um, COVID has definitely played a huge part in um, sports this year, but I kept saying that at least we were able to have a full season. Um, Although things looked a little bit differently, I think kids really enjoyed being out there. Um, our cross country team did really well. Um, they competed in five different meets, um, had a couple duels, and we ended up with one runner that competed at the state um, meet and represented Hawkinson High School, Sophia. Um, sorry, I'm not sure what happened to my girl's swim pitcher, but we also had a lot of success. We had nine girls who competed. Um, for Hawkinson. Uh, we also had a co-op with um, Le Center uh, with a couple girls from there, um, but we were able to send two relay teams to state and then a couple of those girls also competed in individual meets, so they were successful as well. Um, in football, um, as you know, um, we were second in league this year and we went on to play two postseason games. Um, football is our largest um, participation for the fall. We had 67 athletes out. Uh, we had a brand new, not, we had a new head coach this year, not brand new to Hawkinson. Um, and so we look forward to just building on that program even more next year. Um, and I think our um, 
biggest success was our girls soccer team um, who finished second in state out of, I think it's 62 teams that are 2A teams in the state of Washington. Um, they finished second and so they had really a fun ride. They're such a great team to watch and um, it was really fun. Um, let's see, next slide. You know, um, Hawkinson High School, we have about 30 certificated teachers on staff. Um, we have about 28 coaches for our sports throughout through the year. Um, and so we really rely heavily on, you know, outside coaches to um, come to Hawkinson to coach sports. And so they do it all because they really love coaching. They love um, they love Hawkinson. Um, I'd like to keep them. I know that we don't pay them as much as other districts around us. Um, Steve said last year they received a 4% increase um, and we're hoping to continue that so we can still make it competitive, but um, keep, our, keep our coaches. Um, clubs. Um, before I talk about the clubs at Hawkinson High School, I wanted to just share a little video with you about our return to school in the fall. Um, all of our students were welcomed at the front door by our leadership crew, our band, our staff, and cheerleaders. Um, and it was a really an amazing start to the year. There was lots of positive energy. Um, I know they say a picture is worth a thousand words and I think this video really speaks to itself. Oh, do you know how to do that link, Steve? Um, I am looking for your link, so where is it? On the student clubs page, if you click on the Hawk, the YouTube link will come up. Sorry, I was doing it on my screen, realizing that it's not gonna work. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm no. gonna go back. <laughs> oh. Okay, sorry. Uh, no problem. There we go. Oh, is there no sound? Do you hear sound on your end? I don't. Yeah, I'm not hearing any sound there either, Steve. We only get to go through Steve's speakers because he's, or whoever has the <clears throat> video playing, it won't go through Zoom. Okay, so there's no sound is what I'm hearing? No, no. I thought I heard a little right. bit there at the end, but. Hmm. Uh, my microphone is on. This is showing sound. Uh, I'm not that tech savvy. Anyone want to speak up and give me some direction about how we can make sure the sound accompanies the video? Um, you know, one thing maybe I could do is if I just um, put the link in the chat, maybe we could just pull it up on the YouTube channel. It's only like one minute long. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Even <clears throat> if you um, well, I'm sure Mary Hilton is going to be so appreciative that I paused this video <laughs> right on her. Um, but you know what, Kathy? I think that let's share the link with the CAC. Okay. But I think that definitely um, this group has got a, a taste right, of the first day okay. um, energy and, <clears throat> and the intentionality that went behind it. So um, I'm going to go back to your presentation. All right. Um, well, the, 
the thing I love about that video um, is, like I said, just a lot of positive energy and excitement. And um, when I when I look at this, I just wanted to show it because I just I I love our students here at Hawkinson High School and all of our clubs. And this um, video of the first day just really shows why Hawkinson High School is a great place for these kids to go to school, um, whether it's the band, the cheerleading, the leadership crew. Um, and it was just a, a great way to start the year. And I think our positive energy all year long has been um, kind of indicative of that first day. So, um, and the other picture, um, if you've been to any of the football games, I just think we have a great student section. Um, it, We've got half the stands filled with students and um, our band. And the thing I keep telling our kids is I love that they're not too cool to have fun. Um, so, you know, our goal, Tim, Tim and I, is just really want kids to love being at Hawkinson High School every day. Um, when we look at the next slide, um, it shows a little bit of our different clubs that we have at school. Um, and these clubs are student initiated, student run, they each have an advisor, but really it's the kids driving um, the meetings and the activities and all the things that they do. So some of the clubs meet daily, um, like ASB is a class, band's a class, drama is a class, in addition to the hours that they spend outside of school um, doing the activities or leading things for our school. Um, then we've got some other weekly meetings and um, maybe once, once a month or twice a month, depending on what season they're in that are more curricular or extracurricular. And so when I add all these numbers up, you might have kids that are in ASB and band, so maybe 373 isn't the right number, but basically um, we have a lot of kids participating in clubs. Um, band is our biggest one. Um, basically, one of every six kids at Hawkinson High School is involved in band, um, and they're involved in band activities year-round. Uh, they're, they're amazing. They're present at all of our home football games, all of our basketball games, in addition to all their own performances and competitions, and um, we just have an amazing band. It's really, it's really fun to um, listen to them. Another thing that was new this year um, that our ASB advisor Beth Tuga started was the flight crew. And um, the flight crew is made up of representatives from all of our clubs and all of our sports. And the idea is to kind of help them understand about each other's club and just promote more unity and inclusiveness at our school. So they've been able to meet, um, I think they meet once a month. Um, and this group of students that you see in the picture on the next slide, Steve, um, we started doing spirit runs. So they've gone to focus periods. I think, um, I think we've done it two times now um, and just kind of advertising what's happening um, for activities that weekend, what's happening with the clubs and just trying to be present. Um, and then Kathy, slide. before we advance, yep. I'm going to go back one slide. Yep. And I wanted to clarify something. Actually, I just wanted to repeat rather than clarify. Yeah. When you talked about these three, these are called kind of co-curricular, right? Mm -hmm. Because they are offered within the school day, but then they have an extracurricular component to them. Right. Um, meaning like, let's talk about band. Band will practice songs that they will perform at events outside of school, whether it's a concert or a parade or a competition, right? Um, another example of co-curricular would be a club that is associated with a CTE class or career technical education class. And so um, let's say we have... Uh, like FBLA. Our FBLA yeah. is, is the, I don't know, counterpart to our marketing classes, right? And yeah. then the other thing I wanted to point out was this robotics club of two. Yeah. Because if you didn't have the background to this, you think, wow, that's really kind of a, um, a, an anemic club. 
But no, that, that represents a 200% increase. We were at zero last year. And um, robotics is, is something that we want to create a pathway for. And Kathy and Tim have been very deliberate about exactly that, creating pathways for students. So if, if we could do some introductory activities at the elementary level, and that would take the form of like a maker space in the library where students are kind of doing STEM activities, science, technology, engineering, math. And then there were maybe some activities that were done deliberately after school. And then community ed is offering Lego robotics. Then you go to the middle school and they have, um, they have kind of like this FRC robotics club. And then you go to the high school and then there's the first robotics club. And we don't, we don't host that club. That is a consortium between Hawkinson, Camus, and Washougal. And uh, again, that was something we committed to. We had zero students last year, but Kathy and Tim have been promoting it this year. I think Kathy even invited First Robotics to come to a football game and mm -hmm. have this uh, robot that shot t-shirts into the crowd. And now, I mean, we're on the upward trajectory. So two actually represents something. It represents a toehold, and hopefully that will continue to grow. Yep. Thanks, Steve. I forgot about um, when they came to the football game. That was a lot of fun and um, stirred up a lot of interest for their club. Um, OK. Um, when we talk about the numbers, if I go to my next slide, um, I have two accounts that I work from to support these clubs. One is the extracurricular fund, and this is money that I get from the district to support our extracurricular here. And the other account is ASB, which generates its own money um, for clubs and activities. Um, when I look at the money in the extracurricular fund and what it covers, um, here are some examples. Uh, I give, I, we give $500 to each sport um, for supplies and equipment, um, but you can see that $500 doesn't cover um, a lot, but this money um, goes to cover equipment. Um, and so I took some actual numbers from our budget this year. Like we had to replace some scoreboard equipment that was 200 porta potties. Um, the, the rentals for the field lights when the um, time changes and we're practicing late and we don't have um, lights on the practice field. Um, supplies like football change they broke <laughs> in the middle of one of the games this year um, and they went and got a broomstick and some duct tape to finish out the game but we have new chain chain sets so we're good for a while um, basketballs for the year cost 800 um, football helmets that's our big um, expense 10 football helmets being reconditioned was four thousand dollars baseball's 500 um, we pay money out to rent fields um, for turf. We had seven postseason games with soccer and we hosted three of them. Um, so we rented fields at Battleground Stadium for that. Um, we also rented um, turf fields for um, one of the football games that we hosted. And then um, we needed to move our one of our regular season games to Camas when our field was unplayable. Um, we pay for pool rental fee for our swim teams out at Lacamas. Um, we have a trainer this year, which is awesome. And so that's a contract. I think it's about 15,000 between the three seasons. I mean, for the whole year um, and then extra supply. So that's just some example of what money I get from the district and what that goes towards. So the rest of it for the um, teams really comes from are awesome booster clubs that help with uniforms, with meals, with um, just kind of the extra things so that the teams do their own fundraising for that. Um, on the next slide, the, the next account um, that we have money from is ASB. So ASB does generate money. Um, I looked at last year's budget, um, last year revenues brought in about $80,000. And 
these are some examples of some of the big categories that you see. Um, we get a lot of money from their membership fees, um, from gate receipts. They did some advertising at the football field and in the gym that brought in some money. Um, the dances are a big fundraiser for them. Some money from merchandise, some from vending machines. Um, and the next slide shows our expenses. So our expenses equaled about um, 70, what did I say, $79,000. So we kind of cut even there a little bit. And our big expenses that ASB pays for are transportation costs for our teams to attend their um, away games and our officials. Um, there's some money in there for ASB to um, do their do their thing with the decorating and the bulletin boards and all of that stuff. Um, postseason transportation and postseason costs also come out of ASB when the teams go away. Um, when we went up to Linden, not Linden, um, we had a couple games where we had to pay a little extra more for transportation um, and meals and things like that and recognition. So it, the ASB generates money, but it's about equal. Um, so the next slide, um, kind of joking about the Hawkinson way. <laughs> um, so I've quickly learned about being in a small district means we have less staff and we have less resources, but we're able to accomplish so much because of the support of our families and our community. Um, I'm kind of blown away by how many volunteers um, step up to help out with um, our games, like from chain crew to line judges, scorekeepers. Um, we couldn't, we wouldn't be able to do it without them. Um, not to mention the, the fundraising that our AAA booster club does um, to help all of our activities um, and athletics and um, all, all the clubs. Um, we have a band booster, football booster. They, they just raise a lot of money to help out with all those little extras for our kids. Um, when I was putting this graphic on here and it says the Hawkinson schools are the heart of the community, I was kind of thinking it's almost um, our community is the heart of our schools because we couldn't do it without them. Um, I think, yeah, I'm kind of at the end. So I apologize, I did not rehearse this. I hope I answered your questions. We usually allow for a few questions, if okay. that's okay, Kathy. Yeah, um, I yeah. do appreciate the presentation. Um, Steve, may I ask you to let some attendees in as panelists so that they have an opportunity to raise their hand? And Yeah, sure thing. Uh, I'm going to get out of the screen and then Thank you. I will admit some of our CC members. Thank you so much. Um, members, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Then I can see. 